What have like, when we look at the cohort of companies that you are with, your Blue Aprons, your HelloFreshes, all of these big names, what did they do wrong? I actually think HelloFresh is doing a pretty a pretty good job. The way that they have been growing through acquisition is pretty interesting. So they've been bolting on other services, which I think is a pretty interesting strategy. And then they like co-market throughout. So they, they bought that, Fa- is, Factor 75. and they, that they not like, just a sign of losing innovation? Maybe, but if you look at food companies, I mean, that's how they grow. Like you just look at the set of food companies in this country and they all kind of at some point turn into like, okay, let's like go acquire something. But what did they do wrong? I mean, I I think that the, the story I, (laughs) the story I heard about blue apron when they opened their New Jersey facility and they insisted that like all the software that runs uh, like all the machines is custom. Like we're going to build it ourselves. It's like, uh, you know, the sales guy's like, okay, but like, this works in thousands of factories across the world. It's like, no, it's not good enough. We need it better, right? And uh, the story I heard is that there was a time where boxes were piling up on a conveyor belt that was 40 feet up in the air because of some sort of like, oh, it's going to be a lot more efficient. The problem was they couldn't even get the boxes, like they were piling up. They couldn't even get the boxes down because they were 40 feet up. They didn't know how to get up there. So their orders are not going out. And it's just this big freaking mess. And they spent hundreds of millions of dollars on this facility. I see that a lot, both in that scale as well as on smaller scales, where it's like, in order to do this well, we need to do it ourselves. And that, to me, if I were an investor, would be a big red flag because there is oftentimes a company that, you know, yes, are you giving away a little bit of margin? Sure. But you don't have to worry about that as like something that you're worried about. And a lot of founders try to boil the ocean really fast by worrying about everything at the same time. And that just is not conducive, in my opinion, to one, having any sort of life outside of the company. And two, to actually building something that, you know, people want to support. It seems like that D to C model of like, we need to own it all ourselves and insource it. Like it, it doesn't work. What's the biggest resource allocation mistake you've made? Like you said there about people spending it on legit, um, the warehousing and actually kind of the tooling. When you review, what are you like? I can't believe we spent money on this. <laughs> I mean, brand is up there. Not that I don't believe in brand, but I mean, that's a big one. Um, as a res- as a res- sorry, actually on that, as a result of that, do you just cut brand marketing to zero? Then you're like, listen, I have no well, idea. What we've tried to do is to make sure that the marketing dollars that we're deploying are defensible, right? That they have like a ready line to some sort of, of money. And it can't just be like, oh yeah, we're going to hope for the best. It's really like, how does this turn into something better? Which channel really didn't work? Brand marketing is like a bucket, but when you look at Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, influencers, all the different channels you have, which one really didn't work? Out of home, the out of home being like billboards and bus wraps and that type of stuff. I think you could argue though that we didn't give that a fair shot, but that would be the worst performing thing that we've seen. You don't have the luxury of giving it a fair shot. That's the hard thing I find. And that's something I don't like with bootstrap businesses in your model, which is like bluntly content takes a long freaking time to work in a lot of cases. You just have to, you know, blogging takes years before you really see the compounding advantage of SEO. You don't have the luxury of that time to keep going and keep allocating towards it in a bootstrap model. Well, the counter argument would be you actually have all the time in the world because there's no one breathing down your neck so they grow faster, right? So like, if you're willing to take some time- But you time, can't literally afford to keep spending on it. But interestingly, if you think about the dynamics we were talking about with marketing, every marketing dollar you don't spend, generally for these companies, is profit, right? So you've got your gross margin, and then you've got your cost to do business, and then you've got what's left over, marketing and profit. So if, if I'm like, I, don't, I can't deploy dollars fast enough in a certain area, generally those equal profit. So you can, you can go slower and oftentimes you have to. Like the, the number of people who have told me that we would be growing faster if I took venture over the past like five or six years, although I've just been a broken record of like, not interested, not interested, thank you very much, not interested, which is a whole thing, you know, going back to like, what was I running from? I mean, one of the things I was running from is I had a pretty bad experience raising money in my first company. It was pretty like traumatizing. And I, yeah, I didn't want that experience again. I wanted something different. 